Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. With Mother's Day approaching, I thought, what can I get my wife for Mother's Day? Browsed the web a little bit and found a vase, a inside out vase. Now, inside out is simply wood that is blocked up, made up with four blocks to begin with, turned to make a cove on the inside, then split apart, reversed, and glued back together again and turned to the outside so you have a nice hollow that is not hollowed, it was turned in the first stage. So let's make this nice little inside out vase for Mother's Day. I have a log of what I believe is gum from a yard tree. It was cut about five years ago. I'll try to salvage it for this project. Despite being ripped in half and the ends waxed, it has deep end checks and some very pretty spalting. I've milled four pieces of approximate 2x2 two two from the same log section. Two are heartwood and two are spalted sapwood. I've glued them together with a sheet of paper in each joint. It is important that the sides of each piece are at 90 degrees to each other. So now the block is mounted between centers. Perhaps I should have reinforced the joints more, but I forgot until I got started. Then it seems solid enough for the depth I want to cut. My bowl gouge is freshly sharpened. I need to cut from the corner into solid wood without shattering the cut edge. I'm taking light cuts as I work in. Once the wood is solid, no problem, except I need to work it deeper. It is tough to estimate how deep to go and how it will look in the completed vase. Then sand the cove through all the grits. I can sand under power on the solid wood, but must hand sand out to the corners. I'm choosing shellac friction polish for the finish. It just will not get a lot of friction out to the corners. Next, I need to separate the wood pieces. The paper joint responds to a couple of taps with a dull chisel. I did not take time to sharpen it. I don't need to remove the paper, but I do need to ensure the new surfaces are still clean. To glue them back together, I'm gluing pairs together. Since two pieces are heartwood and the other two are spalted sapwood, I'm alternating them. I'm also noting that at the beginning of the cut does not line up between each of the two pairs. It appears that I had a slight shift when I centered the block in the first mounting. The best I can do now is to try to optimize the slight offset. After the pairs dried, I sanded the face again to make sure it is flat, then glued them together using glue sparingly. Then let the wood dry overnight. Now for the scary part. I've mounted the glued up block between centers trying my best to center it exactly at the intersection of the wood blocks. Instead of rough rounding off the whole blank, I'm focusing on one end where I'll cut a tenon for remounting. Now that it is securely mounted in the chuck, I can start carefully to shape the vase. There is no way I can just hog out the wood. One reason is that the wood is more delicate due to the inner space. A bigger reason is that a lot of cuts are cutting air and there is no bevel to ride. Also, as I move from cutting solid wood over to where the openings are, I can easily cut deeper with the same pressure. I'm taking it slowly, cutting little by little, sighting on the openings to get a uniform wall and shape. Before the slats get too thin, I need to address the neck and mouth of the vase. 
I will drill out the opening first with a Forstner bit. I could have cut some with the first inside out turning, but I prefer this to be really round, not kind of star shaped. With the hole ready, I need to flare out the opening with a spindle gouge. However, I'm worried about the strength of the side slats, so I'm mounting my steady rest to support the neck while I do a little more hollowing and rough sanding. Then I'm doing the final shape of the neck, removing wood little by little until I get the shape that I want. After a little more shaping, it's time for sanding. This is tough with the voids. Plus, the edges are very sharp. For this area, I'm increasing the spindle speed and holding the sandpaper by the ends so that only the middle hits the wood. While this may tend to round over the leading edges a little, I'm okay with that since I'll be sanding those edges anyway a bit later with fine grits to ease them. Then clean it off and spray it with rattle can lacquer. Then I'll part it off and clean up the base and buff it for a nice shine. The challenges of inside out turning are in visualizing the interplay of the inside turning versus the outside turning and turning the thin slats over the hollow portion. Yet the reward of a unique base is worth it. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends, and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.